As I said in my O2 sensor video, the car has been running lean. I haven't been able to get as much fuel out of the fuel system as the amount of boost that I've been trying to cram in. And so I need to start finding ways to try and be able to get more fuel. Do I need bigger injectors, bigger fuel pumps, or is there something else going on? To help me start trying to track down where I can get more fuel out of this system and my next steps to take in the future, Aftermarket Industries got in touch with me. And first thing they've done is they've sent me this. This is the Aftermarket Industries Fuel Pressure Regulator Adapter. Now, what this little thing lets you do is plug any aftermarket fuel pressure regulator in to the factory fuel rail. Why would you wanna do something like that? Well, one of the main reasons is because the drop-in fuel regulators like this one have a fatal design flaw. The return feed for the fuel line is too small, basically. It doesn't allow for enough fuel to be able to flow out, and as a result, causes there to be higher base fuel pressures than what you would tend to try and get out of your system. Whereas this adapter has a totally different return feed, which is much bigger and allows for a lot more fuel to flow. And as a result, you can have lower base fuel pressures from the get-go. Now, why does that matter? Well, there's a bit of math involved and I'm not gonna go too in-depth into that right now at the start of the video, but essentially, when the fuel pressure is higher, the fuel pump has to work harder, and when the fuel pump has to work harder, it can't flow as much fuel. So, while your fuel pressure might be higher, you're actually getting less fuel after a certain point, or there's a diminishing return on how much you're making your fuel pump work. And so what this adapter fixes is that return line, allowing you to have lower base fuel pressures, and in theory, should allow for more fuel to flow into the engine. All right, so let's have a look at what we get in the box. Well, we've got our regulator, and here's those return lines I was uh, talking about, and We've got some adapters to be able to fit it to our regulator and we've got ourselves some cool merch. Now, the regulator that they have sent me whoa, is the TurboSmart external regulator here. While I'm assembling it, let's talk about this fuel pressure regulator adapter. The factory fuel port return is a bottleneck. It's too small, which means fuel can't flow through it fast enough and it causes higher base fuel pressure. Drop-in fuel pressure regulators use this port and as a result are heavily restricted. But the aftermarket industry's fuel pressure regulator adapter fixes this problem by acting as a high flow bypass for the fuel return port. This means that you can use the factory fuel rail while having an external fuel pressure regulator and you totally bypass the restriction of the factory fuel return port all at once. This means you have better fuel flow. Better fuel flow means you have lower base fuel pressure, which then in turn means you can get more fuel. AI use this adapter in all of their high horsepower plug and play Falcon kits from 1000 to 1400 horsepower with the 1400 horsepower kit using even larger fuel return lines. And if you needed any extra proof that they know what they're doing, they designed the fuel system for the Monster Torque ZF Falcon that ran the 7.9 second quarter mile, as well as a bunch of other high horsepower cars, including pro level and even racing teams. You can get your own adapter kit by using the code or the link in the description. You know, it might actually be easier to get the regulator itself off first. I was thinking that. Yeah. Get it out of the way, then you're more likely going to be able to get something over the top and out the back to yeah. loosen that um, clamp off, and then you can rotate it around where you can get the cutters to it easier. Yeah. Oh, it's in the drip tray. What is there for? At least you're going to wish you put gloves on because that's going to spray. Oh, everything. good point. It is. Oh. That's why I have you here for the amazing tips like put gloves on. If you're watching at home, make sure when you do car things, put gloves on. Unless you like ethanol on your skin. Mmm. Your face wasn't in that. Yeah, uh, no, I didn't <laughs> think so. Alright. Let's see what happens. Look at this soft skin pussy. Put the gloves on. <laughs> Soft hands, brother. 
I just got back from my 72 hour shift at the ball crushing factory. Um, okay. That's so uncomfortable. Like as in, it feels like, it feels like I'm doing something I shouldn't do. You know what I mean? Your hands are in the way of the camera. Oh, oh, see, sorry. Oh, mm, fucking, oh, Christ. It'll be the O-rings holding it in. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad it doesn't just pop straight out, but still. Just be mindful of potential fuel squirting out. <clears throat> Put the safety squints on. There we go. Ain't nothing getting in these eyes Gage, now. Gage is telling you no pressure. She'll be right. <laughs> Oh, it's definitely starting to come. I'll just keep playing with it with my hands. Keep wiggling it and it'll come. No, nothing. Not that much for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really want to undo this gauge because I keep I keep grabbing the gauge. Um, and it's making me really uncomfortable. Because I need that. I don't want that broken. Get off. I want some of these that ratchet. Those ratchet open enders. Yeah. So nice. It's nothing better. I'm gonna buy a set and never lend them to you. Oh, please do. I'm gonna send you wheels of me using them though. Hey, that's, look at that. That's actually not too bad. That didn't piss everywhere. Ooh. Fuel, fuel, fuel. You lose it so much that it didn't focus. Good. I don't want it to know what it is. I don't want the audience to see anything. All right. Mmm. It's absolutely not GFP. It's turbo smart. I can smell the 85. All right. Let's go. Come on. Maybe I can leverage it out a bit. Walk it back and forth. While applying pressure to it. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. All right, so I want to compare this to this one because come over this way, come have a look. <coughs> Can you see it okay? Okay, it's focused. Oh man, the fumes from the <laughs> mm, sweet <coughs> E85. Oh, it smells great too. Mm. I actually don't mind the smell of E85, but um, yeah, so that's our factory, well, our drop in factory replacement return line, and that is what our aftermarket industries return line looks like. But you can see that one of these is a bit longer than the other as well. You can see how that's, there we go. It's a bit of a gap, that factory one's longer. So that's squeezing down. Where this pushes in to the fuel rail, that's squeezing down that space there. Whereas this one, well, for one, it's coming through here now, but also it's shorter, so it's not squeezing down that space as much, which should give us much better uh, return fuel flow, and as a result, allow for lower base pressure, and lower base pressure means better flow overall, more fuel. So let's get this assembled, put this in, and then hopefully the car will actually turn on if I've uh, done it all correctly. Uh, so the car's not going to work the first time, probably. <laughs> Maybe you're on the right route to begin with. Well, it's done something. I don't know if it's helped though. And eventually it'll kind of, because it kind of gets yeah, a bit stuck to it and it'll break that contact. Oh, all right, there it is. Hooray! Turn line, free and ready to go. All right, we're just going to pop it back on there so that it can't go anywhere and nothing can fall in it for now thank you all right let's make it face this way a bit more this time make life a bit easier all right i think that's up to the hilt yeah and then i think you want to Twist that 90 degrees so it's kinked towards the mm. fuel rail. Yeah, I think you're right. That'll kick you out. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it'll be able to twist on this as well. Yeah, but you won't be able to nice. twist that 
fitting in the line. You don't want to twist the line and potentially kink it. Yeah. I think that looks about right. This will go here-ish. This will go, let's just, that'll go about there-ish. And where'd you throw the clip for the, the regulator? The clip for the, what? The clip for the regulator? Clip holds it into the rail. Oh, it's in the, <laughs> it's in the, um, drip pan. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We've hardly needed this, which is fantastic. Yeah, here it is. All right. Just smear a little bit of jelly on, basically. Yeah. All right. Fuck it. <sighs> Fuck it, wee ball. Get in there. Oh. I think that's right. Nope, it's not in far enough. Hey. Yeah, it did just need to push in a bit more. Yeah. Are we able to twist that now? Oh, yes we are. Okay, cool. It's nicely lubricated with that patrol. <coughs> yeah. yeah. And all these fittings, um, I'm gonna Try and hold that in a way where you can see it. Nope, yep. that's not going in. Oh. Yeah, and all these fittings rotate nicely. Which is good. That's not done up fully yet, but I'm just getting it all in place first. Yeah, so I'd clock it forward a bit more so it's... Yeah, so it's not... You want to be hitting. Able to get to the adjuster. Yeah, exactly. All right, spanner, spanner me. All right, let's just see if I can get this. There we go. Now I just got to do up all my little lines and stuff again. What did I have? I think that was there. This one is still plugged in, which is nice. Oh, that's right. That was right. That was just free balling. The regulator back line. Yeah, I don't know where it's fucking. Oh, there it is. I was gonna say it's. Oh, that's a bit of a problem. All right. Well, now it's time to get fuel pressure again. Yep, let's, let's see. Let's turn it on. See that we don't have squirting everywhere. Yep. Okay. Check that it's not just gonna put fuel all over the place. Next, I adjusted my fuel pressure down from 60 to 40 PSI. You'll also see that Aftermarket Industries sent me this very nice fuel pressure gauge. They have these on their website and they'll drop into basically any fuel pressure regulator that can take a fuel gauge. Now that we have that base fuel pressure set uh, all the way down at 40 PSI, we've basically dropped an entire bar uh, off that base fuel pressure. We're gonna go for a drive, we're gonna see how the car responds, how the AFRs are uh, with this uh, fuel pressure now. And we're gonna see basically if this uh, aftermarket industries adapter, which allows for this big uh, you know, aftermarket regulator and all this extra return line fuel flow actually allows us to run a lower base fuel pressure. We're gonna be able to keep an eye on it using our go fast bits g-force 3 and right now so we're on e85 stoich for e85 is 9.8 so as you can see we're hovering around 9.8 just moving up and down by that tiny fraction and now that you're up there hopefully you have a nice clear view of that gauge and we're going to go for a little drive do a couple of little um pushes see how the car wants to behave I have a good feeling. Obviously, I can't go any faster than that for now, but that's pretty much it. That is incredible. Just changing 
that changing that return to something so much bigger, something so much more capable, allowing the base fuel pressure, of allowing the fuel to flow more freely has allowed for that base fuel pressure to actually sit further down. That is incredible. On that drive, the car hit a peak boost of 16 pounds and no lean cut. The last time I put it on a dyno, it was running lean at just 14 pounds. Just by using this return adapter, the car is now capable of running more boost and still not leaning out. With bigger injectors, I could be looking at significantly more boost, probably more than my rods can handle. So next, I think it's time to push the limits of what this build can do. After all, aftermarket industries are all about fuel systems. All of the fuel systems.